Good morning. So, a couple of days ago, I posted a kind of quick 10 minute flow for all you runners and cyclists and fitness people um, who may kind of suffer from fairly tight hips and thighs and glutes and whatnot. Um, this is a slightly longer video, so probably about 45 ish minutes. Um, so it's slightly longer, but um, it's kind of deliberately going to be longer because we're going to hold poses for longer. Um, we're going to try to allow this. to do the work. So we really want to focus on breathing, relaxing, allowing a bit of time, a little bit of gravity, a lot of breath to um, do the work. Uh, to go with it, you probably will need, and you probably won't have yoga blocks as such, but that doesn't matter. You can use just about anything, whether you've got like a nice kind of big book of some sort, maybe the Bible or whatever, I'm sure that's probably not allowed to sit on the Bible, but um, you can use something like that, um, either that or even just some cushions, um, just find a couple of pillows, whatever else, and that might be useful too. So we're going to get started and this is going to be a fairly different style of yoga, we're not going to be doing lots of flow, we're basically going to be, well we are going to be sitting down for 99.5% of it, there'll be a couple of poses where we just move around and maybe do a down dog or two, but basically sitting down, my favorite, favorite sort of yoga. So we'll get ourselves started. So hopefully if I put this up here somewhere, we can kind of see just about everything that's going on. So to begin with, we're gonna take what we call kind of um, Bhadakanasana or bound angle or butterfly maybe. Um, as you can see, it kind of looks like I've got wings. So you're going to bring the soles of your feet together. And we're going to be hanging out in this pose for somewhere about sort of four minutes. Um, so if you already feel like this is pretty intense through your hips, take your books or your blocks or maybe your uh, cushions and just support the thighs a little bit. Take some of the weight off your legs. Allow your body to relax. The more you can... Um, take off some of this stress from here, the more you're, you'll actually feel the muscles relax. And over time, over this four minutes, you can gently tease them out. It'll be the same for all the poses, so I'll give you those variations as we go. So, find the soles of the feet together, try to sit up onto your sit bones, and just gently allow yourself to fold forward. So it might be that if you've got something you could use some blocks or some um, books or something to rest your chin onto, and just allow that to feel relaxed. Then maybe you can kind of drop your head and find your forehead resting, something along those lines. But just try and find yourself relatively comfortably into that position. Even if your knees are up here, you can still find things to support them, just to kind of take some of that weight off. So as we move in, we'll kind of take four minutes from here so just begin to try to relax down. You don't have to lean forward too much. Just find that nice little sweet spot where you kind of feel something, but it's not too intense. You don't want to be feeling that after 30 seconds you need to move. As I said, we're gonna be here for a full four minutes. And so um, you want to, what we call play your edge. You want to find that position where it doesn't feel super intense, but you do feel something. Um, we're not going fully restorative, where we don't feel, you know, you kind of, in restorative yoga, you aim to pretty much not feel anything, but just completely relax into a shape. Whereas here we are aiming to feel something, we're trying to feel a, gent feel a gentle pull through the insides of the thighs. It may be that because you're tight, you feel it more through the back of the hips. Um, which is completely fine, completely normal. Don't feel that just because, you know, the ideal is to feel it through the front of the thighs and you don't feel that you feel it something else. We're all different, our bodies are all different, I'm completely different to you, you're different to me. So, you know, don't worry too much about that. Just know and feel what you feel and that's the most important thing. So once you find your edge, you're just gonna begin to kind of play with it. So use your breath to maybe kind of gently move a quarter of a millimetre slightly deeper. 
and see how it feels and if it doesn't feel too tight then just use that exhale to soften back away and allow those tissues to relax. Try to make each inhale, each exhale last for maybe around about the four or five second mark. So we're trying to hopefully make each breath last for about 10 seconds. And try to breathe in and out through the nose. And try to focus onto the hips, onto wherever it is you feel that sensation. And with every exhale, try to imagine you can feel all those tissues just letting go. And as they do, hopefully we can begin to move a little bit deeper. Again, just because I say it doesn't mean you need to, but you could just shift those blocks or those bolsters or those cushions or the books out just a little bit. So just about another minute left here. Can you believe you're already three minutes through? So the three things that we're going to try to stick to is kind of the three little rules of this style of yoga is one, to move into the pose and find the shape. So like we've done, we've moved into this butterfly, found the shape, we've found the edge and we've kind of been sensible enough to pay attention, not let our ego feel that we need to go deeper. And then the second is that we do not move. So we try to just stay with it, hence the fact we play our edge. If we move too deeply, it becomes too intense, and we feel that we have to move out straight away. Obviously, there's two little rules to that. One is if you can go deeper, then feel free to move deeper. If you start feeling like an electrical burning sensation, move back, come out of the pose, readjust, and then go again. If it's Obviously, if it's pain, then we don't want that. If it's just a a hell of a sensation where it just feels pretty deep and like it feels like you've been in one position for four minutes that's good just hang out so gently sit yourself up now allow those blocks to move now what we're going to try and do from here is take double pigeon so you might have heard of pigeon pose and um, we're going to take what's double pigeon or fire log sometimes called or a square pose so this right foot is going to come across so the uh, flat of the foot, the sole of the foot is just about in line with the outside of the hip. Now I'm not someone who demonstrates this to the full capacity properly because I can't do it. So um, depending on your hips and your anatomy will depend on whether you can or not but you're then going to try to find your left foot stacking onto this uh, knee here. Now if you can get this knee down and keep this bum down and then this knee can come down brilliant, hang out there. If not, just allow this foot to fall in front of the opposite knee. So then you've kind of, you're almost sitting cross-legged but your shins are square to the front of the mat, hence square pose. So once you find this, you're gonna have kind of a bit of a triangle between your legs and hopefully maybe something around the back of the hips, maybe something through the thighs, maybe the outer hips again, completely dependent on you. From here, if that feels fairly strong and intense, hang out there. If you feel like you can go further, then maybe you can begin to fold forward. Same as if you've got the full posture, maybe if you're kind of nearly there, you might want to put a little book or a pillow under this knee just to allow it to relax. And then again, you can hang out there. Try not to press this knee down, just allow gravity to do the work, allow your anatomy to get there. I'm gonna switch back to that variation because to me it just works for my hips better. So again, going to be here for just two and a half minutes this time and again we move back to the breath it might be that you want to have your eyes closed just to really focus on maybe you don't to be fair you could do this because we're sitting for quite a long period of time you know if you wanted to as long as you can still focus on your breathing you could have the tv on you could have a little bit of a book i'm going to be telling you when to move if you practice this sort of two or three times then you're going to know where we're moving to anyway so then you shouldn't necessarily need the sound quite so much you can just um, 
just pay attention to me saying, and move. So again, we've only got two more minutes left. So again, find that edge, as we said, that first little tapa, first little rule of this yin yoga, find your edge. And once you've found it, find stillness. Again, if you need to move because you start feeling pain, by all means, definitely move. If you just can feel like you can go deeper, awesome, go a little bit deeper. And the third and final rule, which we didn't come on to a little tougher, is time. We allow time to do our work. Rather than in our yang flow, our, our more physical active flow, we move and we kind of try to stretch the, the actual muscular tissue um, of our bodies. In this, we're trying to go deeper. We're trying to avoid, we're not trying to target those. We're trying to target the connective tissue, like the deep fascia, the, uh, the joint capsules, um, depending on how you view anatomy. Um, things in sort of, as far as I'm concerned, people like the anatomists I read and follow, um, ligaments and things are a, kind of basically all just connective tissue anyway. We don't necessarily have true, well there's a few true ligaments, but the rest of it is just um, kind of fascia basically. So we're trying to target those deep connective tissues, which um, we can't target with our yang practice. Last minute left. So um, yeah, if you try to target these tissues in the way that we do in our more vinyasa flow ashtanga, then you're just going to break yourself. Um, whereas now we're relaxing, we're not trying to hold tension, we're trying to allow the body to soften it. Obviously, again, paying attention to ourselves, allowing the body to stay safe, stay within its edge. But we just allow these tissues to be put into a slightly different position to maybe they're used to, to allow them to find some length. Not trying to stretch them, just trying to stress them and allow the body to realise that a little bit of attention needs paying to these spots and over time it gets used to these positions and just allows us to relax into them deeper. Last 15 seconds. Five seconds. Slowly allow yourself to come back up. Don't rush anything, obviously. Say we're targeting deeper tissues, the ligaments, which don't have the stretchiness. So move slowly, allow them to move back to where they were. This top leg is going to spin around the back, straight back behind you. Now what you do, we're gonna come into um, pigeon pose, for like just single pigeon pose, so or swan as we call it in this, slightly more uh, elegant. So just lift the hips up, and again, this might be where your book or your block or your pillow comes in handy. So if I, we're gonna to try to find this right knee just kind of slightly outside this right hip, and this left foot slightly towards this left hip. Now, if at any point you need to move this hip further in, this, this ankle, further in because you're super tight it's too much feel free again this is your body you might not be able to move quite so deep straight away especially if you've just run a marathon so if that's the case if not then find this um, foot somewhere near this back hip and again you might need your block or bolster to put under this bum cheek if I just spin round for two seconds we can just find this block coming under this bum to support us to keep the hips nice and square and then again from here, we just begin to fold down. The back leg is trying to stay nice and straight, and it might be that this is as far as you can go, in which case, fine. Again, we're here for two and a half minutes. Maybe over time, you can drop yourself down, 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 and it might be, again, that this block ends up not being needed, and you can drop yourself down to the floor. And so we hang out here for two and a half minutes, We've already done 10 seconds, so we're already working our way through nicely. I'm just going to spin myself back to the front so you can... 
Now, if you are someone who's super, super bendy um, and you find that this is really easy, then to make it more intense, this foot comes further forward. So you would end up trying to find this foot parallel, a bit like we just had in that double pigeon. But again, that's pretty damn intense, so don't rush to get there. Just try to, again, play your edge and allow time and gravity to move you down through the posture. And again, maybe you can't get the head down, but you could find a book or a pillow to rest your head on to, to support, to allow some relaxation to come, not just to the hips, but to the neck and the shoulders. Maybe that can allow the jaws to relax as well. Again, just staying with your breath. Try not to hold your breath if you can. Keep trying to elongate the inhale, elongate the exhale. Don't be scared to use your blocks and bolsters. Remember, props are our friend. They allow us to relax more deeply into the pose. And you'll actually find you progress much quicker by using some blocks and bolsters than you do without them. Last 10 seconds. Slowly bring yourself back up. Sit down onto that right bum cheek. Swing that left leg all the way around the front. This right leg now is gonna to come to what we call kind of shoelace pose or half shoelace maybe, depending on where you're at. So with this left leg out in front, the right leg just crosses over. And we try to find, if we can, the knees square. Now it may be that this doesn't happen for you, your knees are too, your hips are too tight. That's fine, just maybe find it coming to stand up somewhere sort of to the outside of that left leg as best as you can. So either stay here, with your half shoelace, or if you feel like you can, you can bring this left foot in towards the right bum cheek. So again, don't feel you have to move this. If you do want to try this, then try just coming up onto your knees, so you can line the knees up, the feet kind of go out towards the sides, and then we sit down onto our bum. Now even if you're in the first position, which was this with the leg out, there's nothing wrong with this. They're pretty much the same pose. We're targeting the same tissues. This one in many ways is just a slightly different pose in that you also get a nice bit of hamstring length, which you may be wanting if you've just been having a nice run today or this weekend or whenever it was. So pick your option. Again, if you feel like it's super tight around the hips or in this position, maybe the hamstring, you're done. You're cooked. Just stay and breathe and allow it to come down. Again, I'm gonna come back into the full position just to re-show that. So you just have to line the knees up and come and sit down. Chaps, it might need a slight adjustment. And again, try not to, um, especially if you end up practicing yoga a lot and in your head you feel like, oh, I wanna be super good and I wanna be bending right forward. Bearing in mind, we're never gonna get all the way forward here because we've got something in the way, whether it be our knees, uh, girls, maybe boobs or in your bellies, whatever it might be. So just know that our bodies will stop us coming to a certain sort of position in the practice. So just find a nice comfortable position and we're here for another three minutes. So just try to, again, find your edge, don't push it. If you need to, you know, make sure you're kind of, it may even back a little bit just so you can allow the legs some space to play on that edge to find your breath. If, you man if you're having to hold your breath, then you probably need to straighten this leg out again and just hang out there. 
if you've taken the, f the first posture and you are now beginning to fold forward because it doesn't feel too bad, it might be that it feels like you're beginning to hyperextend through the knee. Maybe it feels like all the um, strain's coming through the knee. So for that, you could just find a slight bend in your knees, place your hands under it or, you know, like a cushion or maybe um, a blanket that you've rolled up, something along those lines. And then we're just hanging out. So we're one minute through, just another minute and a half left. So we're trying to target again, a bit like we did in that other class, we're trying to target all the four sides of the hips and the legs. Again, for here, maybe you want some books or something to place your arms onto to relax. Another minute left. So basically, as I said, it's called yin yoga. Our more physical sides, ashtanga, vinyasa flow, what I even harder to a certain degree tend to get known more as your yang style, so more physical, active, flowing. Um, and so, obviously this comes from more the Chinese side of your yin and your yang, your little circle with the black and white and black and white dots last 30 seconds. And so what we're um, trying to do is find balance, find balance in our lives and our bodies, uh, in our practice. And it's all very well if we want to be physical the whole time, but actually our body needs to find time to soften and to target these different tissues and to relax and just allow some space to happen if we're kind of go, 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 go the whole time we're only going to end up burning ourselves out. Slowly press yourselves up. So we're going to try something slightly jazzy here. The hands are going to come either side of the right foot, which is on the left hand side. Make sense? So the right foot, just follow it, right foot. Hands going to come down. You're going to press into the hands, into the feet, lift the bum and spin yourself around. If you've taken just the single side, I will show you what to do now. So you should then find if you spun through 360 degrees, you're then just in the same position. If not, if you were just single-sided like this and you were folding forward, just do the opposite. Unhook this leg, lift the other leg over, find now the left leg on top. The right leg comes in or it stays out depending on your position, your your um, your choice really. So now we're taking Gomakasana or um, as it's called in Yang, but more of um, shoelace pose on the opposite side. Again, if you need to, lift yourself up, square your hips and sit down. Maybe you might even want to sit on a block just to raise the hips up a little bit and find, you might find that takes off some of the intensity and allows you to sit there slightly easier. So three minutes here again. Take your option of where you wish to be. Could be single leg, could be double leg. Just do the same as what you did on the other side. And close the eyes, maybe we find the breath. Feel a cool sensation on the back of the nose. Softening down. So as I was saying, with finding balance, our lives are, especially in our Western culture, go, 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 work more, sort of work every hour under the sun, then we come home, we've got to look after the kids, the dogs, whatever it might be, and we're kind of then getting up super early to go to work, we've got to find things, to time to cook and to eat and whatever else, and we're so flat out, we never find time to relax, and unfortunately, obviously too much exertion leads to exhaustion. Um, and so finding time just to slow down, to settle down, even just for this sort of 40 minutes that we're doing, can just allow 
you know, your time, your body time to recover. You want to try to switch off your sympathetic nervous system, so your fight or flight, which we pretty much live in permanently, and we find that we probably end up with, you know, feeling like we just have no energy whatsoever because we fight, you know, we reach for uh, adrenal fatigue. So just taking half an hour, maybe once a week, you know, twice a week maybe, just to allow the body some time to slow again through the bleed breathing. We switch from sympathetic into parasympathetic, from fight or flight into rest and digest. As this happens, we give our body that natural healing time, the time when all of a sudden it can switch back to that, oh, okay, my heart rate can slow, maybe my blood pressure can start to normalize. Um, even things as far as um, blood sugar levels, blood cholesterol levels, they can also begin to improve once we switch off this, ah, I've got to be everywhere at once. So try to find a few moments to do that. Unfortunately, if we don't find time for ourselves, our body will just do it itself. We're into the last 30 seconds here. Quite often, as I'm sure you'll be aware, as soon as you, once you're kind of flat out, flat out, flat out, and as soon as you begin to stop, your body just goes, no, you're ill now. And then you kind of just become, you know, you whether it's a cold or a flu or whatever else, or even an injury if you're a sportsman, um, you know, if you push yourself too much, eventually your body goes, had enough, I need to rest, I need to slow down. So from where we are now, slowly come up. This top leg, just bring it over out the way. Bring the bottom leg through and just allow the feet to come down. We're gonna take a slight kind of counter posture to all of these deep hip work that we're doing because it's probably feeling pretty intense. So just allow the legs to windscreen wiper left and right, right and left. And then from here, we're gonna just take a little tabletop pose. So bring the feet in line, bring the hands so the fingers point in towards the bum and just gently lift the hips up reaching up and then exhale come down again inhale up exhale down one more time exhale down again give the legs a slight little shake we're going to bring that left leg now in front for pigeon so it's just a single sided pigeon allow this back leg to come back behind us again so the right leg comes back behind us. again if you need to find your block under your bum maybe um you need it maybe you don't see what works for you if this pigeon i should have said on the first side really but just as a variation if you find this really really uncomfortable then you can take a variation so if not move into it now and just find this kind of two and a half three minutes of um posture here if you feel like this is too much then just try to bring this foot to that straight angle at the front. Sit on the hip, bring the back leg to about a 90 degree as well. So the hip points out, the leg points down. That should take off some of the intensity and then maybe you can begin to fold forward. And over time, I mean, it's a different pose. It's called stag, you know, stag um, or 90-90 sometimes, but it might just allow you to kind of get into the hips in a slightly different manner. But if you can, try to stick with the pigeon for now, just as so we're all roughly on the same page, but feel free not to if you don't like this one. So finding your breath once more. See if you can relax your jaw as well, because you probably feel that, because all of this feels tight through our hips, you probably feel like you want to go and bite the back of your jaw without really consciously knowing. So just see if you can yawn it out, shake it out. Again, allow yourself to relax. Maybe you want your head to rest on a block. Maybe you can find your hands. But remember, you're not trying to force yourself down. You're staying with your edge. Just because I can come forward like this doesn't mean you will necessarily be able to. There's plenty of people I know who can bring this leg completely forward and still feel not a huge amount. So again, it will just completely depend on you. We've got another minute and a half left here.
So try to stay focused on the back of the nose if you can. Try to use this kind of these three, four minute um, blocks as kind of little mini mindful uh, meditation moments. So you don't have to, you know, have your jaw sticks burning and be all dressed in white to find time to meditate. Even just a few minutes of just feeling the sensation on the nose, lengthening the breath. sitting with yourself, finding a sort of a higher awareness of what's going on in your body, being mindful of how your body feels. Last 15 seconds here. And then slowly find yourself pressing up. So now, we, as we sit back onto this left bum cheek, we draw this left foot so it becomes parallel to the front of the sort of mat or the room or whatever it might be that's in, you know, um, in front of you. And as we then swing this right foot round, try not to move this left leg. And again, maybe full posture, you can come to this double pigeon or fire log or square pose. Again, as you can see, this doesn't really work for me. That's fine, I'm fully happy with that. All I have to do to get something out of it which doesn't feel like pain is to drop this leg in front and then all of a sudden you've kind of got this nice square position. You can begin to feel something through the hips. Again, if you feel something fairly sort of a good sensation here, it's fine, just hang out here and breathe. Relax, allow your tissues to soften naturally. Maybe you can begin to roll forward and it might be that you want to bring your arms onto blocks again. See how you feel. The breath really is the key in yoga. Um, you know, I guess some people feel they just want to stretch or whatever else, but to actually get the most and the sort of benefit out of these postures that we put ourselves into, you have to find the shape with the breath. There's no point in just, or very little point in just sticking yourself in this posture and then kind of not using your exhale to really allow yourself to, to sink in. Because the exhale is a bit which is going to allow the tissues to relax. You want to try and switch off with stretch receptors, which you know, blocks and bolsters and things are really helpful to assist with that. You want to be able to feel like your body is safe. You want to give your body that space to feel that it can let go. And using your breath really mindfully, focusing on where you're feeling the sensation. Obviously, you can't actually breathe into your hips. But if you were just to focus there and imagine that you're sending your breath there, It may well be that you feel that kind of that area open a little bit, a little bit more. It may be that that kind of mindful attention to an area where you're feeling tension is all it needs just to begin to let go. Just another 30 seconds here. And then slowly as you inhale the next breath, rise up. Again, sit back gently, uncross those legs. Maybe lie onto the arms, allow the legs to feel 
super tight. If it feels like you need to groan and grunt, that's absolutely fine and normal. This kind of style of yoga does tend to, you know, bring out a slightly old manish feel in us, and that's completely fine. All women, obviously. Right, final pose then. Um, moving into what we call frog pose. So this one's a pretty, pretty strong one. So if you haven't got mats and you're doing it on carpet, you might be kind of okay-ish, but I would maybe recommend finding just a little um, blanket or cushion or something if you're not used to being on this side of the knees. So you're gonna try to find, I'm gonna do it without the pillows just to, just to begin with and show you. So you're gonna try to find the knees coming down and the feet are gonna try to rest. So the inside step of the foot is on the floor and the shape of the posture will end up being something like this. So as you can see, we're targeting these inner thighs, but again, it might be that you feel it somewhere else. Now this is definitely one where blocks and bolsters and pillows and whatever else can come in handy. So you can maybe find pillows, you can kind of properly stack yourself up to support. You can find books to maybe even assist that with and find a bit of extra height and you're just gonna sink into that. Now again, this is pretty intense. It can be quite sore on the inner knees, which is why I said maybe putting a cushion or a pillow, something under that, just to make it a little bit easier. We're gonna be here for just the last four minutes. So again, be careful, listen to your body. Again, you can play with where your feet are a little bit, see what feels best for you. There's no wrong or right, um, whether they're kind of in close, in further away. It'll adjust where you feel the sensation. It's your body, you go to where you like. Now, the other options are, if this starts feeling um, like, oh, this is really easy, I don't mind this at all. You can begin to shift your hips backwards. Now, when you shift your hips back, it gets much more intense. So again, play your edge. It might be that you want to be right forward to begin with. Again, completely fine. Allow those hips some space. Probably a good one if you want to get your box splits on. You know, if that's something you want to achieve, then um, <laughs> maybe try this. But just find your edge again. Be nice and careful. Breathe. Um, be mindful of what it is that's going on in your body. Relax. Again, maybe you want to find the head resting on something. Maybe you don't. Maybe you just want to feel like you want to scream as long as it's not in kind of pain from an electrical burning, stabbing sensation. It's just a, it's tight. Then that's awesome. Just hang out in that sensation your body is feeling. There's Things that are coming up from the hips, just sit with them. Don't have to figure out what they are. Just allow the body space. Space and time. Relaxing as best we can. You've got one more minute left. If you haven't come out already, you're doing really well.
last 10 seconds. Slowly bring the feet together. Lift yourself slowly, gently up. See if you can just oh, bring those knees super slowly together. We're just gonna take a little down dog just to finish to kind of find some space to press the hands into the floor, lift the hips up, gently pedal those feet out. Maybe lift one leg up and give it a little shake out. Maybe lift the other leg up, give it a little shake out. Just generally find some space. That's quite a deep practice for 40 minutes. Allow yourself to maybe just come back down. Take a few moments just to <sighs> sigh everything out. You probably feel like everything feels maybe even worse than it did when you started, but I promise it won't. Give it a few hours and they'll feel lovely and lovely and soft. Try and practice that, you know, every now and again whenever, maybe even post run. If you've been for a run, fine. I know 40 minutes is quite a long time, but maybe even if you just want to, once you've done it once or twice and you know the poses, you know, cut it down to a sort of 15, 20 minute, just you know, two minutes in each pose. Hope that's okay. If you like the video, please press the like and maybe subscribe to my channel and I will try and keep uh, more videos coming regularly. Um, if you know anyone who might benefit from this, again, please share it around and, um, Hopefully I can be of some assistance to some of you runners and cyclists I know because I do know a lot of you. Um, cool. Have a good uh, rest of the week and weekend and I shall try and put some more videos up next week. Take care. Bye.